I could spend a hundred hours, maybe even a thousand, talking all about enchiladas, what they are, where they come from, and all the beautiful fillings that I love so much. Well, we don't have a hundred hours or a thousand, but we do have some time to bring in Erin, who's going to show us how to make a beautiful vegetarian version. I am Bridget. Typically, enchilada verde has a chicken filling. Right. We wanted to make a vegetarian filling. We honed in on using roasted poblanos and black beans. So we are going to start with four poblanos. I've prepped three over here. Poblanos are awesome. They are fruity, they're spicy, and they really have a lot of meat to them. So I'm just going to cut this in half, and I'm going to seed them. That's where the heat lives, the this, seeds and the ribs. Exactly. So we want the flavor, and there still will be some heat. Okay. Now we're going to move on to our tomatillos. So tomatillos are really tart and really sour, and they're really good. The brighter the green, the tarter they are, the more yellow they are, the sweeter they are. We want these to be tart. We want this to kind of come through. So when I go shopping, I just kind of take a peek. Oh, you're and, a peeker? And I, yep. I remove that skin and put it back if it's yellow. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse this off. And that's just to get rid of that residue on the outside, right? Yes, exactly. Now I'm just gonna cut this in half. Okay, so we're using one pound of tomatillos. It's also really important to make sure that they're all uniform in size so that mm -hmm. they cook at the same rate. Okay. I'm gonna put them in the bowl with my four poblanos and I'm gonna drizzle them with one teaspoon of vegetable oil. Usually, when you roast poblanos, you roast them over an open fire. Sure. But we're inside today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use our broiler. Well, that's smart too because we're roasting more than one or two chilies, right? Exactly, yes, yep. So I'm just gonna line these guys up. We wanna roast them so that their skins are blackened. Mm -hmm. We will not be eating the skin, but that flavor is really gonna penetrate into the meat. All right, Bridget, we're gonna put these in the broiler. It's about six inches away from the heating element, and I'm gonna check it halfway through to make sure that they're broiling evenly. It's gonna take about five to 10 minutes. Okay, Bridget, our vegetables have cooled for about 10 minutes. As you can see, they've softened, steamed, and they're cooked through. We're gonna take the tomatillos and start with our sauce. I'm gonna leave the skins on our tomatillos. They're gonna add a lot of charred flavor, and they're also tender enough to eat. Right. So I'm gonna add these to the food processor, and I'm gonna add one onion that I finally chopped, and half a cup of fresh cilantro. Mm. This is really important. This really gives a nice herbal note to it. A third of a cup of vegetable broth. This is gonna help give our sauce consistency. We're gonna add a quarter of a cup of heavy cream. It's gonna give our sauce a little bit of body. Mm. One tablespoon of vegetable oil, two cloves of garlic that I've minced, a tablespoon of lime juice, a little bit of fresh citrus. This is a teaspoon of sugar. The sugar is gonna help to kind of round out the acidity as well. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna make it sweet, it's just gonna help balance. And a teaspoon of table salt. Now I'm gonna process this for about two minutes okay. until it's a nice sauce. Okay, it's been about two minutes, and our sauce should be nice and smooth. I'm just gonna pour this into a four cup glass measure. So our sauce is ready, now we're gonna move on to the filling. So I have a 12 inch skillet here and a tablespoon of vegetable oil. I'm gonna heat this up over medium heat. Okay, so our oil is just shimmering. I'm just gonna add one cup of onions that I finally chopped, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Adding the salt not only helps to season the onions, but it also helps to um, draw out their moisture and it helps them to soften a little faster. So we're just gonna cook these over medium heat just to soften them for about five minutes or so. Not really looking for a lot of browning, right? No. So while these are cooking, Bridget, let's move on to the poblanos. All right. All right, I'm gonna show you how to prep one. So as you can see, we have this nice charred skin. We don't wanna eat that because it's really kind of tough and it's not very pleasant to eat. My trick is to just take a paper towel, grip it, and peel it right off. A lot of people like to run their peppers under water. You're washing away all the flavor right. that you just achieved in the broiler, so you never ever want to do that, no matter how messy it might get. You just want to pull it off, simple as that. Now, how picky are you if there's like a tiny little bit remaining? Tiny little bit is fine. Okay. Totally fine. So now I'm gonna just cut this into half inch pieces. We're gonna put these in the filling. So do you want to help me peel some more? I do. Poblanos? So we just need to peel and prep the rest of the poblanos and finish up the onions. All right. Okay, Bridget, our onions have softened. Now we're gonna bloom our spices. So I'm gonna add a teaspoon of chili powder, the half a teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of coriander, and two cloves of minced garlic. Okay, so we are blooming our spices mm -hmm. right now. Can you smell them? We sure are. Uh, they are oil soluble. <laughs> we're bringing out the volatile oils of those spices where you wouldn't get those if we didn't do this step. This is a really important step. And a lot of recipes will just call for piling in tons of dried mm -hmm. spice instead of taking yeah. this extra step allowing those flavor compounds, as Sarah said, are oil soluble to mm -hmm. really, really bloom. Absolutely. So we're just gonna mm. let those cook for about 30 seconds. Oh. You wanna keep an eye on that, sure Bridget? Can. The second main component of our filling are black beans. Okay. So we're using one 15 ounce can. We chose black beans because they're small and creamy. They're easy because mm -hmm. they're canned and they're also very consistent. So I'm gonna mash half of these. This is gonna act like a glue for our filling. It's gonna make the filling very cohesive. 
You always want to use a large bowl when you're doing something like this. You want to be able to move around and not be restricted. It also helps to keep everything in the bowl. I'm glad I'm not a bean right now. <laughs> so our spices are ready. Now I'm going to add our mashed beans to our pan. I'm going to add the other half of the beans. We're going to keep them whole. And I'm going to add our poblanos. OK. Beautiful, that filling. Yeah. So now we're just mixing everything together. We're heating it all through. I'm going to kind of mix that glue mm -hmm. with the poblanos and the larger beans. Coating everything. Yes. I'm just going to stir this for about two minutes until it's nice and heated through and all cohesive. OK. All right, we are heated through. I'm just going to transfer this back to the bowl that I mashed the black beans in. And we're going to let this cool for a couple of minutes. OK. Let that heat escape. All right. And put that aside. Now on to the tortillas. I have 12 corn tortillas. Just six inches, right? Yes, exactly. I'm going to heat these up. Okay. If I use them right now, they would start to get dry and they would start to fall apart. It's really difficult to roll them as well if they start to dry out. Very difficult. So oil both sides lightly with vegetable oil. Just takes literally a minute to do. Now, Bridget, it's OK that they're all overlapping. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put these into a 400 degree oven for about five minutes just until they're warm through and so they're soft and pliable. OK, Bridget, we're keeping our tortillas warm. I stacked them up right here. We're going to peek in yeah, there. We're going to keep right. them covered with the damp towel. And we're going to finish our filling. Our black bean and poblano filling has cooled off. Now I'm going to add one cup of Monterey Jack cheese. This adds a nice creamy texture to it. It's a softer cheese, and it just melts really nicely. That's oh, beautiful. Queso fresco adds great flavor, but it didn't really melt like we wanted sure. it to, and, and cheddar was a little bit too dominant. Right. So we're just going to stick with a one cup of Monterey Jack cheese. I'm going to add one half of a cup of cilantro leaves. Whole leaves. Whole leaves. More cilantro. You can never have enough cilantro. That's true. And this is a little unusual, but I'm going to add a half a cup of our tomatilla sauce. This is going to give our filling that perfect texture. It's just going to loosen it up just enough so that it eats really nicely. And it's going to add flavor, of course, as well. I was going to say, why should the outside of the enchiladas have all the fun? There you go. All right, so are you ready to roll? It's assembly alley here, right? It is assembly uh, alley. Yes. First, I'm going to take a, another half of the tomatilla sauce, and I'm just going to put it into the bottom of our pan. You have to have a little foundation here so that the enchiladas don't stick to the bottom of the pan. Right. They're fully bathed in the sauce. A flavorful nonstick coating. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to fill each tortilla with a quarter cup of our filling. Put it right into the center. And I usually just nudge it around to kind of squish it so it's like a log. I'm just going to roll it over and place it right into our pan. You could never roll up the enchiladas that tightly unless you heated those tortillas first. All right. We have our 12 enchilada rolls in there. Now I'm going to cover them with sauce. Using it all? I'm using all of the sauce. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, the worst is when you don't use enough sauce and the tops of the enchiladas start to flake away mm -hmm. in the oven. They get a little tough and leathery. All right, now we're going to top them with one more cup of Monterey Jack cheese. Okay. More creamy cheese. OK. Now I've lightly sprayed this foil with vegetable spray. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. Now we're going to just heat these through in a 400 degree oven on the middle rack for about 25 minutes. OK. I want that cheese to be nice and oozy inside and on top. Yes, we do. Ooh, I smell it. I, I can smell, smell it, too. I don't even have to see it, but I smell it. Oh, gosh. Oh, and I can see it. <sighs> It's sizzling mm. and it smells amazing, but we have to let this rest and cool for about five minutes. Okay. Okay. All right, Bridget, it has been five minutes. You They've ready? set up a little bit, cool yeah. enough. Exactly. <laughs> Would you like one or two? A two, please. Thank you. Two is easier to serve. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's good. Would you like some garnishes? I Bridget? sure would. I'm going to go for one nice dollop there. Radishes. And these are just sliced radishes, right? Just sliced radishes. They had a nice um, little pepper kick. Yeah, a yeah. little freshness, a little peppery yep. bite. Yep. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, wow. Get that poblano. Got the poblano. Mm -hmm. Got some heat there. Got yep. some pucker from the tomatillos. Yep. As I'm working towards the center of the enchilada, that beautiful black bean, it's just really meaty. Very hearty. Everybody gets better. Mm hmm Comfort food. This is a meal. Yeah. No doubt. Yep. Don't miss the chicken one bit. Move aside, chicken. <laughs> Thanks, Erin. Well, if you want to make these hearty enchiladas verdes, roast poblano chilies and tomatillos until blackened. Use the tomatillos to make a quick sauce and add the chopped poblanos to a hearty onion, black bean, and cheese filling. Fill softened tortillas, roll, cover with sauce, and bake until bubbling and hot. From our test kitchen to your kitchen, flavor-packed, filling, and fabulous roasted poblano and black bean enchiladas. 
Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.